recent events, Hughes, what's, what do you observe as a coach in the relationship between young men and law and uh, We work hard at trying to develop you know, a great relationship in Oxford with them. We bring them in every year, twice a year actually, uh, both the campus and the, uh, and the city. And uh, have ride-alongs from time to time, particularly uh, for kids that uh, may have made a poor decision. We try to really get them to the end to, uh, to that and we let the, the enforcement always tell us the pitfalls of, of what's going on. Uh, they, they've always looked, hey, there's this huge concert or we're always in communication with them about the, the possible pitfalls that could that could cause a, a young man to make a poor decision that can reflect badly on our team and you know, obviously uh, on, on himself. So it's, uh, it's something we work hard at and I really believe, I'd love for you to ask our kids that. I, I'd like to hear their take on it, but I think that um, the, the relationship we have is, is really special in Oxford. So you sense that there is respect both ways? I do. Uh, I've never had a reason to uh, to believe anything otherwise, and, and obviously any time there's, you don't want any situations, but you know, they're kids and they make mistakes like, like college kids do. And, um, the first thing I want to know from the report is, how did our kids react in, in respect to, to the officers? And um, knock on wood, I haven't had one yet that, uh, that the, the police felt like our kids were out of line and, and their respect issues. So, and I think that goes back to the, the, the fact that we've educated them and we've brought the, them in, and, and our chief and his guys have gotten to know our guys and uh, kind of fall camp, spend some time with us. Where do things stand, Mr. Blair, right now? Zero update. I mean, obviously the the uh, our response is out and, uh, to the to the allegations, um, and, and it stands on on its own. And obviously, we can't uh, but we can't discuss any ongoing matters. And that's that's one of the frustrating things. But out of respect for the process, you just you can't do it. I mean, we can talk about our integrity, we can talk about our core values, but um, it seems that. Uh, I'm not sure that's what the media wants to talk about, and so, but I just uh, I can't talk about any ongoing things. No one wants it to be over more than more than I do because we're ready to concentrate on on our team continuing to building the relevancy of, in college football, which we will. And but I have no update on you know, it is still ongoing. Do you have any kind of sense about a timetable along those lines? I asked that yesterday and could not did not get uh, any concrete answer on. It's moving, I think. I'm not involved in the, uh, in the fact-finding at this point, but uh, I think it is moving. But I would be a total guess if, and that's exactly what he, what Ross told me yesterday, it would be a total guess if we started talking timelines. Would you like it to be sooner rather than later as opposed to oh, like mid-season? Gosh, I've had, I've had a, a, a long enough time with it, so I, I would love for it to be sooner than later. But... I don't know what that means, really. Uh, I, I don't. I'm not crazy about the idea if it happens in the, in the middle of the season for sure. But if it does, it does, and, and we'll we'll, we'll, go, uh, we'll go argue our facts and, and our side of things, and, and then we'll be held accountable for, for the things that uh, that were done wrong in and around our program. How about the guys that were out of spring? Um, Give me some names, man. I don't uh, have my Fidal notes Brown. Me. Fidal is still battling. Um, he, he actually just started a new treatment this week. Um, that 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 uh, the stress fracture that he has in a difficult place and people. My understanding from talking to the docs is some people heal differently from that. His has been a slower heal, and and so there's trying some new. Uh, I want to say it's called shock therapy or, or something to get the blood flow there. And we started that this week, so he's going to be in, in a boot getting that treatment for uh, four weeks. And, uh, we're hopeful that uh, this will uh, will help him turn the corner. Connor? Connor uh, looks great. Conyers? Conyers looks good. Who, who else got it? String fellow? String looks good. Rod Taylor looks good. Um, any update on Rod's situation with his arrest, that sort of thing? Uh, you know, I, I say all the time, um, I don't like to play out the discipline of, of my kids or, or, or them in the media, but um, we always have, have a plan, particularly on first-time issues, um, to where if they satisfy the plan, 
that would be the step one in, in the redeeming quality and restoration for them thus far. Uh, he and Breland both have, uh, have done everything that's, that's been asked. Have you decided if they'll miss any playing time for that, him? That would be up to them and how they how they fulfill it. Uh, unless if, if another episode happens, it, it won't be up to them. But uh, on the first first one with these that are misdemeanor type deals, they can't earn their way without missing playing time. But um, every situation is different, obviously. But uh, both of them seem to be doing well thus far. Are you expecting to have to make any staff changes because of the NCA stuff? Uh, not, to, not at this point, but I will if, uh, if need be. If that's uh, I, I, my guys know the expectations, and I'm I'm certainly uh, far from perfect, as, as many of you know. But one area that, that, that is not a temptation for me is to cut corners to try to have success. That, that, that doesn't interest me at all. And our staff knows that. Uh, I'm not talking about you don't make a mistake. Or, and, uh, and, and that's the neat thing that we'll have when we get to go before the committee on infractions. We'll, have, we'll get to discuss some of the things that led to that that are not quite as cut and dry as it might be in, in some people's eyes, but they're still a mistake that we have to be accountable for. Do you think that generally speaking, like with Laramie Tunsil, that having an agent represent a coach and an athlete and a lot of people in the circle is kind of a conflict of interest? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's a good question. I haven't really thought about that. I, I know that uh, I know that uh, you know I, I can't get into that that case, but uh, it's probably not very typical for a kid that has left a program to continue to cooperate to try to. And, and I'm hopeful that that's the case here with, with that one. And I think that will speak volumes if that's the case. So Laramie's sure. been cooperating with the NCAA? I, I hope so. I don't know to, to what detail he has, but I sure uh, I think that would speak volumes if he does. Has Chad had any issue coming back from sports hernia, sir? He's, he's doing great. Regardless. He, I have to slow him down. I mean, he's just, he's, he and Shea, and they're, 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 uh, they're over the top. I mean, I, I walk in at 5. This morning at 5:30, and uh, they have workouts at 6:30, and they're already in there throwing. I'm like, dude, y'all have calmed down a little bit. So, uh, but uh, I love that about. Them. Regardless of when this final decision with the NCA comes, do you think you feel like you you're a better coach from it all? That the program will be better off going through it all? Well, I'll or say learning. This, you know, and I know again, people. Whether or not uh, you adhere to whatever kind of faith, I'm a man of faith. That doesn't mean I'm perfect. But Romans 8:28 is uh, all things work together for good. And and I really believe. I don't like it. I don't like it. Sort of like making a cake. You know, if you were to just have the eggs by themselves, or the baking powder, or the whatever else goes into it, it doesn't taste very good. And that's kind of the, the the spot you're in right now. But when it's all together, it becomes good. And. That's the way I view this, and and you know, you guys have a job to do, and, and I, one of you, I don't know who it was, said if it bleeds, it leaves, and if you really look though at the small percentage, thus far, I can't, I don't know where the end game is, but thus far, if you look at the small percentage of people that are in our building, players, staff that are involved in the notice of allegations, don't miss out on that other large percentage of kids that are being affected by this that have absolutely nothing to do with it. I mean, the Robert Conyers and the Evan Ingrams, the, these, these two-star guys that have worked their tail off to get to this point, and we've had a successful thing, and it's a very small percentage. And it, it's, uh, so that, I say that to say, that is what drives me every day, is the relationship with those 98%, and, and even the relationship with, with ones that make mistakes. You don't stop loving them, you don't stop being who you are, we're relational driven at, at our staff, and I think that, that's what helps us with success. But and there's so many good things going on too that uh, that we could talk about, and they don't. And and I get it; that's the way things are in this world. But uh, there are so many good things going on with so many of our kids and our program and our foundation that our team is a part of. That's happening in Haiti and the Delta. And I mean, it, it's some neat stuff. Our APR is out of this. Gone up every single year. Our graduation rate is, is 80% now under me. Not you, that's not what reflected in the in the news because they do a six-year cycle. But in my time, that's what it is. And 
We had 17 kids graduate last year. We'll have seven that, grad, that are going to play this year with degree in hand. So the percentage of people that are involved in the, in the issues that we have going on right now is a small percentage. And we have to be held accountable for that, but don't miss the fact that, man, there is a large percentage of great things going on. Is it, Last a, is it, is it a distraction at all inside your building, and, and how will you prevent it from being one when yeah. the season rolls around? Um, tunnel vision. On, on, look, we, we, what keeps me up at night now is Florida State's defensive line. It really is. I've gotten past the point of you control what you can control. And like I've said from the beginning, the time and place for us to be held accountable is coming. I don't know when. Um, and for us to share our, vi our view of things is coming. But that's the only thing I can control is when that happens. So in the meantime, when I look those kids in the eyes, the ones who have nothing to do with all of this stuff that have worked tirelessly to become a relevant program in this country, that is what motivates me and keeps my mind on that because they are the ones that are important, the relationship with them and what they become as a man and as a player and as a student athlete, those are the things that are really important. And, you know, whatever we did wrong, we should be held accountable if, if there are things. We should, in and around our program. And we will be. But, you know, the time for that to be decided is not in articles and, and or me trying to, to have another interview. or Heck, some of you want me to talk, some of you don't. You know, and, and I, can't, I can't win either way, and I'm not trying to argue the case, but I am arguing we, our core values are important to us, and they'll never stop being important to us, and those kids keep me focused. Coach, 